we are Tapware Solutions. We are a fast growing software company and have a proven track record of effective IT solutions like AI, cloud computing, and creative design solutions. Exactly three months back, we started this initiative of Elemento Design Internship Program 2022 for aspiring designers who want to start their career in UI UX field without any background. This webinar is an important part of this internship program. I welcome you all to this session. We are very fortunate to have guidance from subject matter expert of the industry. Now, without further ado, I would like to introduce you to our today's speaker, Mr. Harshad Godbole. He is a usability consultant with over 16 years of experience. He played various roles like project manager, project coordinator, and a team leader. Over to you, Harshad. Hello, can you hear my voice? Yes. Okay. So uh, let's start. Uh, before the session, I will uh, tell you basic details. The session will be around 40 minutes. Then we'll have a question answer session after that. Uh, questions you can ask if you have any doubts in between you can just uh, add those questions in the chat window okay so let me share my screen Let me know when you have. Yes, we can see your screen. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, okay, so let's start. Um, um, as you have registered already, uh, you might know my name. I'm Harshad Godbole. Um, if this is a compulsory session for you, then I'm very sorry for your loss of one hour, uh, 40 minutes. Uh, basically, I'm commercial artist. Uh, while I was studying, I was part of many, many theater groups, also done art direction for FTI short films. Um, I have done diploma in photography, diploma in graphic design uh, with my commercial art degree. Uh, then after my college, uh, I started my career with uh, Tata Alexi as a storyboarding artist for TV commercials. Then I shifted to Tata Interactive for e-learning. At the same time, I got a chance to work on few uh, stop motion animations while I was there. Uh, the, our boss was veteran animator Mr. Demon Grass and I got a big opportunity to work again with him on the title animation of Tari Zaminpar which was a big hit at the time. Uh, that was the clay animation for the title sequence uh, first time done for Indian cinema. Uh, then I continued working on the e-learning industry then I shifted to UI UX design um, I also wrote articles in newspapers, work on many books as a designer, on audiobooks as a designer, uh, wrote one act plays and worked on language expert uh, for the Marathi movie starring Madhur Dixit. Uh, the movie name was Bucket List. Currently, I am working as a freelance usability consultant. I am also focusing on paintings. So this is my um, intro uh, i'm telling these all fields because uh, while working in every field i again and again i uh, understand that if you have a very strong basic or if you can uh, brush your knowledge um, in between you will have very good opportunity to work on multiple visual projects because basically this is a visual field and if you want to focus on visual things then color theory and other basics are very important. So that's why we are going through a color theory um, session today. Okay, so uh, the next uh, point why was, uh, is sorry, why cinema? Uh, usually uh, I always use cinema as a reference point to explain almost everything. A uh, few years back even I have worked on an animation I have created that animation to how to design a PPT uh, uh, with reference to cinema. So if you can, um, because it's an entertainment field, then cinema is a wonderful possible combination of literature, poetry, and all types of visual art and music. So if you can refer the cinema, you can easily convert it in any visual field. Uh, you can convert that experience or you can convert that knowledge. 
Okay, so today I will explain color theory uh, with the help of um, some paintings from by Picasso, some paintings by Claude Monet and um, Van Gogh, and the movie KGF. I hope you have seen KGF at least trailer. So, uh, and this is the course content. Uh, uh, the session content will be mainly will have four basic part. Uh, there are points I will cover in this session that is understanding color theory through paintings and movies. The second thing, how to create mood boards. Uh, we'll have a small activity here. Um, then, uh, uh, okay, I will mention uh, in this activity, you have to participate in this activity through chat window. Uh, then, um, how to create mood boards, then how to choose colors from image. Uh, if you have single image and how to create mood board from that single image, that is uh, another part. And then user experience in daily life. So we'll cover these points in our session. So, okay. So let's start. Uh, this is a um, color wheel. Um, this is my experience. After graduation, I thought uh, the color wheel is for our students and now I am graduate, so I don't need any color wheel or any color theory uh, with me, uh, not with me as a, I mean, the, as a reference point because I know everything uh, that was my thought. So, but I was wrong slowly. I understand that uh, it is like, uh, if you if you draw, uh, then you can easily um, relate with this. Uh, so basically it is like anatomy study. Um, though you know all body parts and uh, measurements and relative proportions, like if it is a chairite nayato body, how many length is body, nakit nayato kaam kitna hoga, that those sort of things. But still, you need a reference image to draw an accurate body uh, posture. So uh, when you get the pose uh, in the real anatomical uh, correct way. Uh, as a reference point, then you can convert it or you can distort it or uh, use it in different style. But the base remains same. For example, if you have a running pose um, in a realistic uh, reference you have, then you can convert it into 3D, you can convert it into cartoon, uh, a caricature, anything. But the reference and the basic anatomy will remain same. So the color wheel is like a very basic thing for it's like anatomy of color. So I think uh, if you um, you you are working in a visual field, then you must have a color wheel on your. I mean, hand, you keep you should keep this color wheel handy with you all the time. Uh, just you can copy. Uh, I mean, create a copy on your desktop or something, and whenever you want to do something, just go. Uh, and check the color wheel and cross check few things. Okay, so uh, basically, uh, this is a U. U uh, you can see um, U is a pure color, uh, no black and white added, only color. Uh, this is a tint. Uh, tint is color plus white. Uh, then we see a tone. Tone is color plus gray, and there is a shade. Uh, shade, uh, you can remember that is shade, shadow, something like that. So shade is a color plus black. Uh, usually uh, in our daily life, we say or you you hear mostly, ye hame thoda sa grayish chahiye, yellowish chahiye, bluish chahiye, uh, whiteish chahiye. Uh, there is no such thing. Uh, you should uh, use these terms because these are the real terms grayish and whitish is not terms. So this is a grayish is tone, whitish is tint, and darkish, blackish is shade. Okay, so please use these terms. Uh, then uh, this color wheel is basically uh, converted into, uh, segregated into roughly two temperatures, or uh, two parts you can say. Uh, one part is warm colors and other part is cool colors. Uh, basically, it refers to the visual effect they give uh, and create a mood. 
um, there are a combination of warm and cool colors and we called it color theory because you cannot um, every time you cannot use warm only or cool only so you have if you have a basic combination it's like uh, uh, it's like a chai uh, you like it garam but you cannot drink it exactly so thoda sa garam hai lekin peete vak thanda chahiye so it is a combination i don't know uh, this is a proper example but uh, i will explain it later so basically the combination of uh, temperatures are color schemes so um, these are the six basic color schemes monochromatic analog complementary split complementary triadic and uh, tetradic tetradic is uh, nothing but a double split complementary you can say uh, it is a similar uh, to split but you split both complementary colors so that is a double split complementary so i will ex uh, i will tell you and i will show you uh, this each uh, color scheme through example okay so so this is a first one this is a uh, part of a cloud monet painting uh, it's a basically single color uh, you you can say uh, on the um, tin tone and shade i use with a single color uh, basically it gives a atmospheric effect and it's very uh, useful uh, to create a, a particular mood basically uh, if you um, we have for, we have instagram filters those instagram filters there are few filters like sepia tone and old one so those looks like they create a different kind of mood uh just by adding a single color over as a overlay on that image so say this is something like that okay so this is a again kgf image you can see this is a entire screen is monochromatic but it looks good it creates a mood of that uh situation another uh, on the left hand side uh, there is a great artist uh, his name is henry mertis he was a contemporary Uh, painter with Picasso, contemporary with Picasso. Uh, if you can uh, search his paintings for color, uh, he was uh, very good at it. He was very famous for that. So this is uh, one of his blue uh, paper cutout. But this is also a great example of monochromatic. So this is a single flat color, a paper cutout. and on the right bottom corner you can see uh, different portraits all are monochromatic on different different colors so if you see um, they have used only single hue with tint tone shade and uh, each one is creating a different mood so this is the example of monochromatic next thing is analogous um, this is uh, close to nature because if you see um uh, naturally uh, if it is a greenery uh, fields um, mountains uh, you can see all over uh, you can see green but there are multiple greens in that so you can easily make out the difference of each type of green so this is a okay so this is a green one example i was talking about this is a painting by cloud monet and this they have used analogous color scheme basically analogous color scheme is analog color scheme is um you can choose any three colors uh, which is nearby in this case green a uh, blue green uh, sorry blue green and yellow green they have used so okay so this is a complementary second one then complementary color scheme is exactly you can choose opposite colors on the color wheel in this case uh, in the painting uh, they have used exactly opposite colors uh, but the basic rule for uh, every color scheme is uh, you need to decide your dominating color and then use the other co other color uh, in less percentage so if you are using 80% yellow in this case then you can use 20% blue something like that so you you cannot i mean it is not a rule but if you use 50 50% for 
uh, if you give a 50-50% for each color, then it will not look good. It will not uh, create any kind of uh, um, visual interest in uh, any design. So you have to add one dominating color and one as an accent color. So similar to that, you can see in the left hand side, this is a UI. This is a, uh, you can easily see a complementary color scheme on the left. On the right hand side, there is another color scheme, which is I'm talking about this. It's a, little, it's a, it's a complementary, split complementary. So for example, uh, in the split complementary, if you see only painting, then you cannot make out that these are only three colors they have used. You can, uh, you will uh, see uh, on the left hand side, you maybe uh, imagine that this is yellow, but this is not. Uh, if you see carefully and choose a color, then you can understand that this is a very um, little bit amount of green and used in uh, much percentage with white and though uh, because of uh, this uh, part you can see uh, is on the blue background you your eyes uh, treat this color as a yellow that is the very different kind of uh, i mean um, if you see a color theory books there is a different chapter on this topic so if you put one color and the other 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 color on the side or on the top of it it gives a different feeling so this is the example of uh, split complementary with this okay so this is a another one is triadic basically uh, equal distant color on the color wheel uh, we never see cartoons and um, I mean, in, in my case, I was never realized that a uh, Superman and a genie from Aladdin are in the same color combinations with similar percentage of blue, red and yellow color used on their body. So here you can see a Superman and I will show you. This is genie from Aladdin. So if you see, both of them have a blue body and very little bit percentage of yellow and red. So uh, while watching the animation or watching the movies, you will never realize uh, that this is a proper selected color scheme for each character, but it is and it gives a very uh, deep impression subconsciously on our mind. So that's why we use color schemes. I think this is, uh, I mean, personally, this, this is my favorite example, because even uh, when I, I was looking at color schemes and uh, just searching for images, and at that time I realized it. So this was a surprise for me also. So basically these color schemes are used, mainly uh, used in uh, surreal scenes, or you can say, uh, imaginative scenes, uh, scene scenario and um, cartoons or if it is uh, any product uh, if you have any product related to children then you can use these colors in the UI itself okay so this is a little bit complicated color scheme uh, triadic or double slit complementary if you see uh, the both end of uh, I mean this is a complementary color scheme but uh, each complementary color, instead of using complementary color, we are using the side by colors like green and red. We are not using green and red, but we are using red, orange, and green, yellow, green, and this square type combination on the wheel. Uh, while using this color in the painting, uh, mostly uh, you will not see this color scheme uh, in UI, UX or websites because uh, it is very difficult to manage or handle these type of color schemes. But in the paintings, you can see, uh, basically, if you if you want to use this color scheme, uh, you have to segregate the foreground and background part. And uh, it's the same, uh, again, it's the same thing. Uh, instead of using equal percentage, uh, for example, we are using four uh, different U, then we, we uh, we should not use 25% um, each 
so we sh we have to take in account that which color should be on background and which color should use on the foreground so this is a example uh, you will not see on the left hand side you will not um, maybe you will not it's a difficult to uh, recognize on the left hand side but in the painting you can immediately recognize that two cool colors are used as a foreground and warm colors as a background so basically you have to use one pair as a foreground and one pair as a background so if you use it it's a proven thing that it will look good and not chaotic or multicolored or uh, very gaudy uh, it will not look something like that you have to use it wisely it's very difficult color scheme to use but it's very amazing it gives very amazing effects okay so uh, while using uh, these colors there are, there are multiple um, uh, what you say uh, ways to use colors in ui ux so there is uh, one very good video after the session um, i will request uh, organizer to share this link with you all and it's amazing uh, lead done uh, video for it's a different kind of color schemes they have used and uh, for example i will explain in this uh, these are they have selected a color categories and uh, basically uh, first one is jewel tones jewel tones are mainly all these tones are inspired by a gemstone like a ruby sapphire some some kind of gemstones and uh, if you use these gemstones it uh, gemstone colors jewel tones it will look um colorful uh, bright attractive on the screen because we if you i am not sure about the print but if you use it on the screen it will look very good but you have to use it uh, very carefully uh, i mean the combination of these colors you can use you can select two three colors and create a uh, combination for from that natural neutral tones are uh, basically uh, dominant uh, by gray gray tones it's a sorry it's a tone then um, another one is fluorescent tones fluorescent tones are mainly used in dark ui um, a dark mode night mode ui uh, or you can say a reverse if you want to design it reverse you can use these stones but you have to be careful while using you cannot use all these colors in a single design and there is a shades so shade is basically light and shade they have mentioned it uh, as a dark and white it's a uh, it's not tin tone shade exactly but it's a shade is black and white uh, this is these are the few examples they have shared uh, basically shade plus pastel colors how it will look uh, the natural with earth colors how it will look basically they have uh, created a, a new kind of color schemes with jewel tones earth tones uh, new categories um, they have suggested and it works it works very good uh, and you can create your own palettes um, similar to this and you can uh try different combinations and uh but with the help of color scheme uh, i mean the with the help of color wheel because it will give you a basic uh, basic formula to play around this is another thing is uh, pastel and earth if you notice carefully on pastel and earth it is a, a very uh, good example if you saturate it or if you try it uh or you can imagine it the brown is basically uh, towards red and the 
डार्क ग्रेस ग्रेस ग्रीन टोन जो दिख रहा है दैट इज ग्रीन सो रेड ग्रीन इज अ कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री कलर स्किन बट दे हैव कन्वर्टेड इट एंड मिक्स्ड इट विद अ पेस्टल शेड सो इट इज लाइक इट्स लुकिंग लाइक दिस सो ब्राउन एंड ग्रीन another thing is jewel and pastel and these are the only pastel colors so ardan pastels you can use it but i will suggest uh, i mean instead of copying it try to create your own as a practice and then only you can um, use it or create your own easily in the future so for the um, color theory part um, this is it then we'll see a uh, colors and moods okay so uh, basically um, your feelings about colors are um, often deeply personal and rooted in your own um, experience or in your own culture uh for example um in indian culture if you i mean it's on the screen uh, red is associated with the marriage mostly uh usually people use any color except black and white in the marriage or any function on any any auspicious day usually don't use black or white but exactly um opposite on the western culture uh white dress is a wedding dress so that that was a, just example to convey the message of it's why it is um, i mean if you see white then um, you will not uh, associate with marriage but if it is a i mean the audience is western then it will associate with marriage so basically it's a, about your um, culture another thing is um, okay so uh, uh, this is a little bit uh, um, detail example of moods and colors uh, these are the paintings by picasso at the background um, there are a very famous uh, i mean this is a very famous painting series by pablo picasso on the right hand side uh, you can see the blue painting series which was considered to be the blue period of picasso when the picasso um, was well i mean uh, sorry the picasso was not well known uh, he was little bit depressed and because of uh, the suicide of his friend you can see his friend uh, in the center of the collage and he was very depressed and he uh, painted this series in a blue uh, then after some time he got out of that mental state um, then he was in a relationship with a girl and at that time the rose period of his life started then he worked only on rose uh, or red and white and pink color paintings uh, you can see the left hand side painting uh, from the rose period a left uh, the boy uh, if you notice the bottom image uh, it's a dating app designed by uh, I, i mean it's a image from google i don't know um but it's a pink hue so basically uh, you can match life events and moods and a mental state with picasso's paintings uh, similarly uh, you can check the target audience mental state and uh, their choices and then choose the color according that was the only message from this slide um another example is uh, if you think i mean i'm i mean this is this blue is um, uh, picasso's very depressed times but now um, blue has a different meanings like um, productivity calmness stability uh, confidence authority royalty these are the um, feelings associated with blue uh here for example the color blue is used for trust peace calmness uh but imagine that you are in a closed room without a window or uh, with a blue sky or dark cloudy sky and a blue colored walls 
then after some time you will get depressed so basic uh, wherever you use the color uh, you have to uh, understand in how much quantity you are using and where you are uh, are you breaking that monotonous thing with any other color it is that's why we are using um, color schemes to if you uh, just break this monotonous blue color with orange or yellow then it will look different or interesting so on the right hand side is a blue colored ui uh, and you can easily make out that these can uh, i mean you can design it better with one more color okay so this is a chart where you can see the emotions um, attached to particular color uh, for example red excitement strength love energy and uh, you can just go through all of that i just uh, this is this chart is uh, from the internet uh, i just don't understand why they have uh, added pink for a sophistication uh, purpose on the in the list but i'm i'm not able to understand that but rest is i think okay okay so after this now we understand little bit about colors and color schemes then i have one funny question for you uh, do you know why african king and british queen use these colors for their clothes and uh, another question is we know royal blue but not royal yellow so do you want to guess um, do we have uh, i mean do you want to add the question answer in the chat box if you have then please i will wait for few seconds actually i am not able to see screen so i will just uh, i'll help you uh, harshad for that if anybody is answering over here okay 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 so uh maybe uh, uh, yeah. he is saying that it might come from their culture or surrounding okay blue is uh, blue is expensive so that's why it's royal blue <laughs> but why blue is expensive okay so i will explain what what is uh, i'm telling these things uh, because i mean uh, we can learn uh, color theory and we can start working immediately on ui and any design in any visual design but you have to understand there are uh, i mean there is a history behind every uh, single color so i will just as a re representative colors i am taking these two colors uh so uh, okay so i will go on the next screen okay so in early uh, in 1500 when michael angelo was painting on the walls of cathedrals okay so ultramarine blue uh, is sold at almost the same price as gold at that time because it was uh, done i mean it was created with a gemstone uh, similarly in ancient egypt uh, which is 200 2500 bc uh, blue color was created with a gemstone you can see a gemstone insert here and that's why it is very expensive it is like a similar price to gold and that is the reason uh, it was so costly the color was often reserved only for royalty even in egyptian period even in um, i mean european period in 1500 but uh, the main indigo indigo blue is uh, basically we get this indigo blue from our uh, indigo plant in india so it's very cheap at uh, i mean it's very cheap in india and we are using this uh, color to color the fabric from almost 6000 years so we don't have any uh, maharaja blue or something they have expensive blue so that's why they have royal blue we don't have any expensive i mean we we have multiple colors 
for yellow we have turmeric we have uh, blue for uh, i mean indigo plant for this blue so we don't have any royal blue or royal yellow or anything like that but they don't have any colors and they have to create it with gemstones that's why they have royal blue so that is one uh, reason okay so this is uh, something interesting uh, it's a small uh, some art historians uh, believe that this painting uh, of michelangelo is left unfinished because he could not afford blue ultramarine blue uh, and that's why he i mean left it in between so it's very interesting because right now we have uh, a chemically created ultramarine blue and it's very cheap so we it's very difficult to understand the uh, i mean it's uh, how at the time they are creating each color so that's why uh, blue was very expensive and okay so now blue uh, though blue is available now easily still even today people use blue uh, to show authority or um, any uh, royalty so this is the example uh, of that and it it's embedded in our mind that blue is related to authority even uh, we have a color in the website you can say a corporate blue it's not a real color but usually in the lingo we use corporate blue many people want their websites corporate websites in blue my previous company website was also in blue so the reason behind that blue website and everything is this not this this okay so in real life um um though we know about colors and we can use um, any colors now but the heuristic rule uh, says heuristic is uh, if you are doing a ui design there are some heuristic rules so uh, there is one rule is we need to match the user interface to the real world so that's why though we have multiple colors thousands of colors digitally we still use whenever we want to show the success message we use green tick okay uh, when we want to show any uh, warning we use cross sign in a red color or error message in a red color okay so uh this is another point that we need to match the user interface in the real world though we have multiple colors multiple color schemes if you are using any kind of color scheme on the ui you have you should use um, these colors at least for uh, for example if it is a success message then you have to use green or uh, i mean the um, green or similar to i mean a little bit around green but mainly green tick is advisable because it it's match with our real world like we use signal in same green and red uh okay by the, the red cross was very much familiar to me when i was in school a <laughs> <laughs> <I> same here <laughs> okay so uh this is the end of second part and now third and last part uh, we'll have a very uh, uh, quick i hope we attended um, we have a quick um, activity of mood boards how to practice basically uh, most of the people if you are using uh, you are working in a ui field you know what mood board is uh, basically it's uh, you know, multiple images Uh, to explain the overall look and feel of the product and the, it should not i mean it is not necessary that those products those photos or images should be directly linked to the um, your ui uh, ui product but you can use it but how to practice it so it, it, to make it interesting i have created uh, one um, activity for me actually initially initially i was doing it for myself only and then i think let's um, use it with people so try to reverse the process choose the movie and select keywords to describe the visual look of the movie um 
not every time but if the movie is well done you will always find the suitable color schemes for it for publicity designs and everything so uh, for kgf uh, if you have uh, seen the kgf movie can you please ping uh, keywords for that movie for example uh, the, this is the movie about uh, gold mining in kolar uh, this is the kolar gold fields this is the long term it's a uh, i mean um, organizer you can open the chat window for people again uh, and please uh, at least add one word if you have and uh, please somebody can just uh, tell me what are those words so this is related to um, gold mining uh, this movie is about revenge i'm giving you examples this movie is a small town boy goes uh, to mumbai and become a gold mine king uh yes uh harshad i'll tell you words one by one okay um the people have started with uh, monster gold game of thrones mm. dark mm. uh brown tone shade dark mm. mother's dream mm. Power, kingdom fight mm. warm mm. um el dorado <laughs> I don't know. Yes, it's yeah. mentioned in the movie. Okay, okay. So he watched the movie, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Bravery. Okay. Black courage, love mm -hmm. for mothers, old mm -hmm. revenge, power. Okay, so I will give you one hint. While uh, you are talking about emotions in the movie, mother, child is a emotional part of that movie. i am talking we are doing it for visual referencing so um, try to take a visual reference from that movie so uh, anyway but i got uh, i mean um, there are few uh, which was uh, already i mean i have written few words and uh, mm -hmm. those are matching uh, here so i hope this is uh, good So that do you need uh, some some sort of adjectives which will match to the visual representation of the film? Like uh, no, no. Black, whatever you see, no, no. I am telling whatever you see in the movie. See, I mean uh, the visual impact, the locations. Okay. Basically, uh, those are the very uh, powerful visuals in the movie, and. For example, it's a uh, if you see a uh, name Kolar Gold Files. So these are the gold mining mines, right? So mm. the main eighty uh, percent of the movie happens on the mining field. Okay, sand. So, <laughs> correct, correct. Dirt, rain. Correct. These kind of things. Okay. So I, I think I think you got my point. Uh, I will just share uh, selected keywords. Just a minute. Sure. Okay. So on the bottom left, you can see uh, multiple um, keywords, and I think those are uh, and whatever uh, the dominating keywords. I thought I have selected like gold mining because the KGF is coal or gold files. It's a gold mining mining. uh always happens around i mean mining if you see mining there is a dust it's a revenge story and lot of fighting scenes and everything so blood and the overall story and look of it is uh, dark because again mining thing so i selected these words uh, uh and uh, this is a real uh, activity done by me a uh, few days back while i was planning for this session and when i have selected these words and then i have uh, i search for images and uh, i found these images and it's a very good example because if you see you can see each word visually so if you you if you want in the title you can see gold on the left poster you can see a mining dust El Dorado. I mean, uh, the carved stone. This is the look of that. You can see dust. In the middle, we have a blood color. 
or dark and everyone every in every frame there is only uh, dominating color is either gold or dust or blood so these are the posters and visuals from movie these are left to our uh, posters so i think uh, this is i mean uh, this is out of topic but this is uh, these publicity designs are very bravely done we don't see these kind of publicity designs uh, usually uh, in the movie industry so that's why i have selected this and uh, you cannot match these uh, keywords and you cannot do this activity with current your films that was my intention <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, huh? That's true. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. So another thing. Uh, this is another. This is all about colors. Huh? This is not about movies. I'm telling about colors through movies and paintings. So please remember. Uh, if you see these both products, these are um, products. First, left hand side Schindler's List is done in 1993. Uh, Picasso. On the right hand side, there is a huge painting by Picasso done in 1937. But both products are black and white. And uh, Picasso um, was very much. Uh, I mean, Picasso uh, had color with him, but he chose to work in black and white. Uh, on the other hand side, uh, Spielberg is also. able to create movies in colors amazingly done a uh, few movies but he chose to create it in black and white uh so sometimes there is a deliberate choice of color or not to choose a color it's a deliberate choice uh these are very good examples uh and because um, there is a similarity between both of these paintings uh, sorry both of this painting and movie both are done around Uh, subject is war in 1937 there was a uh, air strike attack on garnika village and this is a war crime scene or you can say a disaster at that garnika village uh, it's happened in black and white era but uh, picasso could uh, create a colorful painting but he chose a uh, black and white to create uh, emotional impact and similarly uh, spielberg has done uh it is, i mean 1937 is around first world war and uh, this schindler's list is for second world war so uh, i think this you you have to understand that still people are using black and white in 1993 in 2000 uh, for a movie a big budget movie or a amazing or a huge enormous painting then uh, they have think Uh, I mean, they thought something, and uh, I mean, you have to respect that, and you have to understand uh, how people are using colors or how people are avoiding colors. So this is the uh, this part is ending now. And another uh, thing is, if you have multiple times in real life scenario, uh, we don't have um, multiple images. Sometimes uh, client हमें एक ही image देता है. and he said he uh, please use this image and create something out of it so in those kind of scenarios what to do so if you have this kind of image not this i mean for example this image and then how to use this image as a, a reference point to start ui design so first of all uh, now you know the color wheel now you have to select different use i will scroll down okay so what i have done here so i have selected different hues different tints different tones and different shades from that from this image okay and i got this is the color range i got from this image okay so use tint tone shades of multiple uh, i got multiple choices swatches then i have created something like this so uh what is this so if you have yellow and yellow orange and yellow ochre and chrome yellow and different kind of yellow then you have to choose and you have to eliminate few yellows uh from your first selected swatches 
uh, reduce it into um, I mean make it 50 percent and I have created again I have reduced it into 50 percent so now at the bottom I have three main colors basically a dark tone of green uh, normal yellow I mean the shade of green uh, U green and U yellow okay now I have to decide how to use this color in a UI design I cannot use dominating 50-50% of yellow and 50% green. So this is the example, uh, just have a look. If you uh, select these colors and this is the, now I have selected dominant colors yellow and 20% green and dark one is for text. And it will look something like this. So this is the example. Um, I'm not sure if I'm able to zoom it. Can you see this? This is the entire image. Yes, yes. Ah, okay. Yes. So this is not done by me, but I uh, thought this is a good example uh, of combination of these two colors. Okay. So this is the um, this is the way you can use a single image as a UI design reference point, and it's quick. But if you are if you want to show it to client, then it something like this. If you want to share it with clients, then you have to do it something like this because you want to show your thought process and you have to convey your thought process to client that what I am thinking, what I have created, what uh, I have uh, selected keywords and what what is the look I am thinking of. So this is a uh, storyboard, uh, sorry, this is a mood board for client and you can use this kind of mood board for yourself. This is a not a uh, proper way, but you can. So it, th now we are in the last uh, phase of this present uh, session. Uh, user experience in daily life. You, if you look around, there are multiple things in the morning itself. If you uh, um, if you brush your teeth, I mean, I, I mean, must say you brush your teeth. I know. Uh, if you take a toothbrush in your hand, you can see there is a, a proper design. Uh, to hold that brush and the proper handle, proper grip, proper bristles, everything is designed to make it easy to brush. So that is the user experience in daily life. Okay, so basically, uh, main thing is if user don't notice this fault, I mean, user don't notice design unless it's flawed. On the left hand side, you can imagine if it is a lift. Um, buttons it's very difficult to operate you have to wait you have to think and then press the button at that time you notice okay ye iska design kharab hai, ye aisa nahi hona so this is the this is where your work starts so ye nahi hona chahi, then kya chahi, that you have to decide this is the solution you have to give to client as a user experience design this is another thing on the left hand side on the right on the right hand side both images are different uh, but on the left hand side um, initially i want to ask this as a uh, question but now we don't have time so i'll just run through on the left hand side uh, there are two types of uh, uh, just a minute i'm getting can you hear my voice properly because the disturbance yes. okay because there is a yes, disturbance yes. at the background okay so on the left hand side um, user uh, i mean the designer has designed for entire um, a range of people like those are visually dominating people he gave a icon uh, those are numerical memories and text uh, dominant people he added the text in below so push and pull with icons it's the best example but on the right hand side if you notice carefully uh, carpenter uh, done uh, as a templatized work you can say but it's a risky thing because you haven't uh, thought of left-handed people in this scenario because in the in this kind of big uh, classroom there might be two or three students who write with left hand so we have to think 
of your audience and the range and the percentage of different kind of audience this was the example so okay okay so this is night mode on the left hand side you can see a road sign at the night which is glowing um divider lines and arrows uh, even emergency signs at the night or if you have a emergency exit situation uh, with light off then you can see all these things glowing at the dark it's in a similar way on the right hand side you can see a dark ui design with a glowing signs or a glowing text or a glowing design or icons so the, we uh, usually think dark mode is um, only in design no it is in the real life itself but you have to think in that way uh, okay so sorry about a holistic approach i will just uh, conclude my session here uh, you cannot just uh, add more and more features without any thought behind it in user experience design uh, try to work with better grasp of all human dimensions that are involved between user and particular design here you can see uh, a two features like one on the left on the chair example they have designed a beautiful balcony but there is no view at all on the right hand side they have given a balcony with a view and also a night lamp but they have overlapping features so there is also difficult to use so user journey is not here proper uh another example is designers creating an impressive user interface but not considering other aspects such as uh, search engine optimization or heuristic evaluation so this is the um, and this is the last thing okay so before using any color we have learned a color schemes color theory everything but before using any color use behavior analysis user behavior analysis is very important always remember design is a primary color or a secondary uh, always remember design is a primary and colors are secondary and you cannot compromise user flows with fancy color schemes ki mera color scheme acha hai but if the user flow is flawed then the product is not good that was the that is the bottom line and thank you and now you if you have any questions please let me know uh, i will stop my presenting presentation so i can see yes uh, thank you so much arshad uh, now we'll be opening uh, uh, unmuting everyone so i request everyone to mute yourself and unmute only when you have any question otherwise there will be background noises from everybody uh any questions guys you can ask hey harshad this is harish thank you for uh, really uh, um, uh, good session we were able to understand the colors and moods how to use it right um, uh, definitely those who are designers they they would be uh, understanding more uh, apart from the developers because they will be more focused on the get the designs uh, xd urls or files and then we'll just basically pick those colors rather than thinking about it but i think this session will help them to now and understand if designer are sh uh, sharing something right so they have to also think from their uh, a perspective and see like is, is this color is really uh, fitting right to the design or maybe from logo and everything perspective right so yeah i have uh, one question which is related to um, something related to aptmart which is our product right where the merchants are not so much technical or they are not uh, really uh, good at uh, defining the colors and mood boards and everything right so when they reach to us uh, the the most important question was mostly like uh, we we share really nice designs or templates based on their uh, domain and everything but when they come to us they they're sharing certain references of this my website should look like this or my logo should be like that so how do you suggest them like uh, what would be the process or how how they can uh, be more i would say like uh, um, efficient enough to uh, design their website or uh, decide which template to choose and how to 
uh, choose the colors when because our platform has those kind of features we are uh, now recently launching kind of a cms feature where they can go and change the colors of the website logo and everything so yeah okay so uh, um, i think um, people usually uh, get confused with colors and um, user interactions or easy ease of use uh, for example um, if you can i mean i don't know but it's a uh, uh, if you can uh, usually my uh, my style of working is i explain user that if you are buying a sofa then sitting on the sofa for a long time should be comfortable uh, and this is a 80% part and 20% is look and feel so if you can manage that i mean i don't know how to explain it to customer but basically ease of use if you can give them examples of um, some apps that easy to use and um, instead of look and feel uh, they should i mean if you can sell them that is uh, the use use of that app or user interface user flows and um, heuristically it is very good then look and feel is i don't think because uh, look uh, if you can give them a customized look even gmail and everyone is giving a customized look for uh, as a screens or even windows are giving but initially we used to change the colors and try our personal things but after some time we don't use uh, i mean look yeah. at it so uh, do you think that we can give them a solution it could be more intelligent uh, in a way that like uh, based on the domains we can define certain uh, colors and uh, the templates or something and we can recommend them like this could be the one of uh, uh, color or maybe like let's say uh, out of uh, hundreds of color shades these are the five or ten top uh, colors that you right. can use and apply will that right. be a better solution because yes, it's yes, yes. a training process right for them correct correct instead of giving uh, different yes you are right because if you give i mean if you give a lot of colors options or a entire color wheel to choose from it will be difficult for them to understand or choose or just they will play around it and they will ignore at the end so yeah. instead of that you can give two to three options of max five options and you can name it in a way that they understand ki uh, for example for example face uh, there are other things but for example face to theme or these kind of things or night night mode dark mode eye soothing mode or something some kind of sort of uh, words That's, you have to yeah see our challenge is we can't like uh, uh, get on a call with our design team and then talk to the merchants and help them right so that's what like we wanted to have a intelligent solution over here where our product can directly talk to them and give them the solution But yeah, I I uh, I got uh, the action item from here. Like, what should be the next step uh, to make this successful? Okay, I think I I will suggest only that uh, just give them a few options and uh, just give them a way how to look at those options. Basically, uh, in a uh, in a mobile, we have a day mode and night mode. Okay, so you immediately understand if you are. what you are choosing i mean the, you are you choosing a day mode or night mode so in that way you have to write it uh, those themes and then they will understand because they will not understand uh, other things like they will ch uh, choose initially they will choose on instinct like i like yellow so i will choose my app yellow for every every screen something like that but if you give them a basic info for that thing or basic usable tips for that team if you are if you have a dark i mean for example if you have a uh, if you want to have a eye soothing uh, thing then choose this one and if you want bright colorful then choose this one something like that you have to give some kind of uh, instruction or guidance to that team yeah that's what i think yeah okay thanks sir sir thank you Hey, uh, hi, Arshad. Uh, this is Almas here. Hello. Hi. Uh, thanks for the presentation. This was amazing. Uh, and I have one question for you, Arshad. Uh, so you showed an example wherein um, uh, there was a, a 
path created for the user, but the user takes a long way to cross the road, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask you whether there are good uh, set of rules to study the human behavior, or there are any methods that you suggest uh, to study uh, the human behavior and then come give the solution to the user. Okay. Uh for that example, um, it is simple like that. Uh, if you have multiple pages uh, form uh, uh, to fill in, uh, you gave a skip button, right? Okay. So that was the idea that if you have a, a, a set of uh, things, uh, I mean, you think as a user, uh, they have to do uh, certain things from one, two, three, four linear way, but uh, always try to think from a lazy person perspective that if they want to skip it they have they should have an option to skip it and uh, basically it means um, i mean jitna wo user ke liye easy hoga that is uh, useful i mean easy hoga a user will like that app that's the bottom line right i just want to uh, know that whether there are some set of rules or there are any kind of methods to study the user behavior or the user research uh, frankly, I'm not sure about the set of method or rules, okay. uh, but we have to check on it. I'm okay. not sure. Yeah. Sorry, thank you, thank Basically, you. user when you are doing a re user research, uh, uh, while doing user research, you will understand the method. Okay, fine, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think it's 12.09 right now, uh, people are already leaving, uh, so if you guys have any questions and you could not ask uh, in this session, uh, I'm guessing the URL over here, in this you can mention your feedback and questions if you have any, we will glad to answer you, answer you those questions uh, immediately. Uh, so, uh, as we are taking this uh, on an ending note, I would really like to thank you guys who joined us uh, on this session. Uh, but uh, before that, the most important part is that, Harsha, this was a really great session. Most of the time, this happens that you cannot learn all these things which you have just told on the internet. This, what you shared is from your own experience. You have created this uh, whole presentation on your experience. So, and the most important part is you explained it flawlessly and simplistically. You you get all these sessions on you know internet and sometimes those are very quite uh, difficult to understand. But it was very easy to understand uh, the whole color theory. Uh, as from the surface, color theory seems very simple. You know, uh, I'm just gonna select any color from uh, you know uh, for the for my product as for what the psychology says. Like if I want to design something for hospitality industry, I would go for very bright colors uh, and soothing colors for eyes. If somebody is creating for corporate, I'll use a corporate blue. But if you do not understand how to use that color efficiently, you'll ruin the whole product. And you explained it very simplistically that I think the novice person in this industry would understand this right now. Um, so as uh, you guys can uh, already say that uh, I enjoyed your session uh, very much. I hope our um, listeners also enjoyed it a lot. Um, so I'd really thank you, Harshad, for coming over here and uh, giving your valuable time to us, your experience, your knowledge. Uh, I cannot thank you enough uh, to do that. And... Um, with that, I'd like to thank you, uh, uh, our CEO, Harish, uh, who always encourages us to uh, create uh, events like this, like today. And um, thank you so much uh, to our design interns team and marketing team for creating enough bus to make this uh, unforgettable gathering right now. And uh, yeah, that's it. And most importantly, uh, there is something interesting coming up. Uh, so wait for our next webinars uh, posts on Instagram, LinkedIn, or Facebook. You will be learning a lot more interesting things in upcoming webinars for from uh, Aptwares Element 2 Design Internship Program 2022. And have a nice day. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Aptware team. I would like to thank everyone from Aptware for giving me opportunity to brush up my knowledge and explain it to you. Thank you.
and please give yeah. me a feedback uh, any any kind of feedback you can mail me or connect me on linkedin and just give it to me so i can explain it better next time thank you Sure. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. I would agree. Really interesting session. Thank you.